Well, Larry, we're here at St. Peter's, and we have a very unique organ. Uh, and your company evidently is tasked with keeping this organ in tune. Uh, first, let's talk about the organ. Uh, where did it come from? How old is it? The organ was built in 1903 in Brooklyn, New York, by a company called Reuben Midmer and Sons. It was installed here in the church when it was completed in 1904 and has been in use here since its installation. Well, now, how did you get started in organ producing and fixing? And uh, When I was 12, I decided to hide in a room so that I wouldn't have to attend the church service. It turned out that room was the organ chamber where all of the organ pipes were. And during the course of the service, I got to see all the parts move and hear the sounds come out of the organ. And at that point, I decided I was going to learn how to do that. Uh, and that's all I've ever done. Very good. Now, I would think that a lot of churches are going to what sounds like a pipe organ, but isn't. But I guess there are quite a few still around. There are many pipe organs still around, and there are many pipe organs still being built today. Um, in the long term, uh, pipe organs last for decades and decades, and electronic organs last about as long as television sets. Mm -hmm. And they're still quite expensive. <laughs> so we've run into many situations where a church will purchase an electronic organ, and 20 years later, when it's time to replace it, they're thinking, well, can't we just get a pipe organ like we had for the 100 years before that? Uh, so in, in many instances, electronic organs are replaced with new pipe organs. Well, Larry, this organ is, uh, is old, and there's a very famous name attached to it. Can you tell us about that? Uh, the organ was built in 1903, as I said, installed here in 1904. So for 105 years, it has been in the use in this church. Reuben Midmer and Sons is the name of the company that built the organ. Later, they became Midmer Losh and built what's today known as the largest organ in the world at the Atlantic City Convention Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Now, this, uh, this organ, I, is, it, can you say that every organ is the same, basically? Um, basically, every organ is the same. Uh, the number of pipes that are in the organ is determined by the amount of space that has to be filled by the sound and also by the budget of the church purchasing the organ. Mm -hmm. In this case, this church was helped by Andrew Carnegie, who paid for half of the cost of the organ when it was new. Now, how many pipes do, and we, we don't see all the pipes, do we? No, in this instrument, you see just a small fraction of the pipes. Most of them are behind the facade, uh, which in this case does speak. So the painted pipes you see play, but behind them are a thousand more pipes that you don't see that make the bulk of the sound that the organ can make. Well, Larry, the pipes that we see here at this organ, are they all the same size, or is the sound uh, based upon the size of the pipe? The sound is based upon the size of the pipe. Uh, the lower the pitch, the longer the pipe. In this organ, 16 feet is the lowest pitch, and about one half inch is the highest speaking pitch of the pipe. So you have pipes here from 16 feet long to about six inches long. And how many pipes did you say we had here? More than a thousand in this organ, which is a very moderate sized organ. Mm -hmm. Oh, so in other words, uh, you would find that in just about the average organ? Yes, uh, yes mm -hmm. you would. You would. Oh, uh, now, as far as the sound that comes out, uh, all these pipes are, uh, that you're talking about, uh, uh, 900 and some are behind <laughs> this organ. How heavy does that make the organ? This organ weighs about 6,000 pounds. Uh, when we took the organ down out of the gallery, we drove through the local salvage yard on the scale just so we could get an idea of how much weight was in the truck when we were taking it back to our shop. Mm -hmm. uh, and about 6,000 pounds is the weight of the pipework and mechanism here. Now, wait a minute. You took this organ and put it on a truck? Yes. Uh, and brought it to your shop? And brought it to our shop. <laughs> How big is your shop? That's, um, and that's a big organ. Or I guess you can take it apart. We, can, we did take it apart. Right, yeah, there, there are ways to transport an organ. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. They got it here before <laughs> automobiles. That's right, that's right, <laughs> yeah. And up very small stairs, probably. Yes. Yeah. All right, now, this particular organ, your, your company, organ, uh, Columbia Organ Works, 
um, a, uh, a thriving company, I'm sure, in Columbia, Pennsylvania. Do you do you service all of the state? We service organs throughout Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, and we have three islands in the Caribbean where we do work. Oh, that must be nice to go over there and take care of an no, organ. It's a chore. <laughs> is it really? And it's all work. <laughs> I bet it is. Well, this, you know, I I was really wondering because, uh, you know, do you have enough work? But I guess just about every church you look at has probably a pipe organ. They do. We maintain about 150 pipe organs on a regular basis. And we also do restoration work on many of those and other organs, as well as subcontracting restorations from other organ maintenance people throughout the country.